from New York City, it's The Cube, covering Welcome to the New Edge. Brought to you by Pensando Systems. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We are in Manhattan at the top of Goldman Sachs. It is a great view. If you ever get an opportunity to come up here, I think 43 floors over the Hudson, you could see forever. But this is a cloud event, so the clouds are here and we're excited to be here. It's the Pensando launch. The name of the event is Welcome to the New Edge, which is a pretty interesting play. We hear a lot about Edge, but we haven't really heard of a company really focusing on the Edge as their primary go-to-market activity and really thinking about the Edge first. So we're excited to have a co-founder, Cube alum and many-time guest, uh, Sony Giandini. She's the co-founder and chief business officer. Sony, great to see you. Good to see you, too. And our host here at Goldman Sachs is uh, Josh Matthews. He's the managing director of technology at Goldman. Josh, great to see you. You, too. Thank you. And thanks for hosting us. Nice, uh, yeah. nice place to come to work every day. I, you're welcome. <laughs> 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 so, great conversation today. Congratulations on the launch of the company. Over two years in stealth mode. Talk a little bit about that. What is it like to be in stealth mode for so long? And you guys raised big money. You've got a big team. You're doing heavy duty uh, technology. What's it been like to finally open up the curtains and tell it's, everybody what you've been working on? It's clearly very <laughs> in interesting and exciting. <laughs> Normally it's taken me nine months to deliver a baby. This time it's been two and a half years <laughs> of being in stealth while we have been get, getting ready for this baby to come out. So it's phenomenally exciting that too, to be sharing the stage with our customers and our investors and our strategic partners. Yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting that you're launching with customers and when you really told the story on stage of how early you engaged with Josh and his team. Mm -hmm. um, first, I want to get kind of your perspective. Why were you doing that so early and, and what did that ultimately do with some of the design decisions that you guys made? And then we'll come back to Josh as to you know, his participation. So I think whenever you conduct technology transitions, having a sense from customers that have the ability to look out two to three years is very important because when you're capturing market transitions, doing it with customer inputs is far more relevant than going about it alone. Uh, the other key thing about this architectural shift is that it allows the flexibility for every customer to go take pieces of how they want to bring the cloud architectures and bring it into their environment. So understanding that use case and understanding the compelling reasons of what problems both technological and business can we be solving and having that perspective into the product definition and the design and the influence that customers like Josh have had is why we are sitting here and talking about them in production uh, as opposed to, yeah, we're thinking about, we're, we're looking at it from a proof of concept perspective. Right. And Josh, your, your perspective, you said earlier today that you know as long as uh, Sunny's involved, you're, you're, uh, you're happy to jump in and see what she's been working on. So how, you know, how did you get involved? How did they reach out to you? And, and what is it like working on you know, technology so early in its development that you get to actually have some serious uh, uh, influence? Well, it's a, an amazing opportunity um, to get exactly what you want, um, exactly what you know is going to solve problems for the business here. Um, you know, and the other thing is you know, we've worked with this team uh, through almost every spin in, uh, I think it was a little young for the maybe the first one, um, but uh, otherwise this team has worked with them through at least 15 years or more. So we knew the track record for execution, and then for us on this product, I mean it was an opportunity because it's truly a startup. Um, you know, th Sony and the team brought us in. Uh, we kind of just put out problems on the table that we were trying to solve. And then, you know, they came up with the product and the idea, and we were able to put together, you know, yeah, these are our priority one, two, three that we want to go for, and and you know, we've just been developing alongside them, so both software and you know, driving what the feature set is. Right. So, what were some of those problems? Yeah, it probably seemed like forever ago when you started this conversation. But as you kind of looked forward a couple of years back, that you could see that were coming that you needed addressed. Um, you know, it's funny. We started with kind of like, well, we think containerization is going to be explosive and and you know really everything's on virtual machines or bare metal mostly virtual machines so one you know as containers come out how do we track them secure them um, how do we even secure uh, you know the virtual machines in our environment because they're you know over almost a quarter million of them the idea of being able to put um, network policy that's I would say incorruptible not actually on the server but at you know that's why we use firewalls right so solving that security problem was number one. The other one was being able to have the telemetry to see what's happening, what's changing, um, and troubleshoot at you know at the network layer from every single server. Again, it's all about s 
scale, like things were just scaling and the throughputs going up, traditional methods of being able to see what's on your network, you can't look in the middle. It just can't keep up. It's just speeds and feeds. So being able to push those things to the edge. And then lastly, it really happened more um, through the process here, but about a year and a half ago, um, we began segmenting our network the same way a 5G provider does with uh, it's a technology called segment routing. And we just said that's kind of our follow-on technology is to, you know, put the network in the server and put this segment routing capability all the way out at the edge. So, you know, some things we foresaw and other things we've just developed, you know, it's been, it's been two and a half years. Right. So um, it's been a great partnership and, you know, I think more, more features will come. Well, Sony, you and the team, it's, it's been talked about all day long, have, have a, a history of multiple times that you've kind of brought these big transformational technologies um, head. What, what did you guys see a couple years back and kind of this progression that you saw this opportunity to do something a little bit different than you've done in the past, which is actually go out, raise, raise around, and, uh, and do a real startup? What was the opportunity that you saw this Challenges. So we saw a number of challenges and opportunities at the same time. We, we clearly saw that uh, the cloud architectures that have been built by the leaders like and the incumbents like AWS, today have a lot of the intelligence that is being pushed into their, their respective compute platforms. Uh, and we also noticed that at the same time, while that was what was needed to build the first generation of the cloud, the new age applications, uh, and even as Gartner has predicted, that 75% of all enterprise data and applications will be processed at the edge by 2025. If that happens, then you need that intelligence at the edge. You need the ability to go do it where the action is, which is at the edge. And very consistently we found that the architectures, including scale out storage, were also driving the need for this intelligence to be on in a scale out manner. So if you're going to scale out computing, you need the services to be going hand in hand with that scale out compute architecture for the enterprises so they can simplify their architectures and bring the cloud models that have only existed in the cloud world into their own data centers and their own private clouds. So there were these technology transitions we saw were coming down the pike it's easier said now in 2019, it wasn't so simple in 2017 because right. we had to look at these multiple technology transitions and surprisingly when we called those things out as we were shaping the company's strategy, getting validation of the use cases from customers like Josh was pivotally important because it was further validating that this would be the direction that the enterprises and the cloud customers would be taking. So the reason you start with a vision, you start with looking at where the technology transitions are going to be occurring, and getting the customers that are looking farther out, validated, plays a very important role so that you can go and focus on the biggest problems that you need to go and solve. Right, it just seems like the, the, the big problem um, f for most laymen is, is the old one, which why networking exists in the first place, which is do you bring the data to the compute or do you bring the compute to the data? And now, as you said, in kind of this hyper-distributed world, yeah. um, that's not really a viable answer, either one, right? Because exactly. the two are blended and have to be together exactly. so that you don't necessarily have to move one to the other or the other back the other direction. So, and then the, the second piece that you talked about over and over in your in your presentation was security. Yes, and, yes. you know, everybody talks about security all the time, everybody gets hacked every day, um, and, and there's this constant theme that security has to be baked in, you know, kind of throughout the process as opposed to kind of bolted on at the end. You guys took that approach from day one to yes, bake it into the architecture. Yes, that was crucially important because when you are trying to address the needs of the enterprise, particularly in regulated markets like financial services, you want to be in a position where you have thought about it and baked it into the platform ground up. Uh, and so when we are building the programmable processor, we had the opportunity to go put the right elements on it in order to make it tamper-proof. We had to go think about encrypting all the traffic and communication between our policy manager and the distributed services platforms at the edge. We also then took it a step further to say, now, if there were to be a bad actor that were to attack from an operating system vulnerability perspective, how do we ensure that we can contain that bad actor as opposed to being propagated over the infrastructure? So those elements are things you cannot bolt on. Right. At design time are when you need to go put those into the design yeah. day one. Right. 
only on top of that foundation then can you build a very secure set of services, whether it's encryption, whether it's distributed firewall services, so on and so forth. Uh, and Josh, I'm curious on your take as, as we've seen kind of software defined everything yep. uh, slowly take over as opposed to, you know, kind of single purpose machines or single purpose appliances, et cetera. Yep. You know, really a different opportunity for you to control, um, but also to see. A lot of talk today about, about policy management, a lot of talk about um, observability, and as you said, now even segmentation of the networks, like you segment the nodes and you segment everything else. You know, how, how do you see this kind of software defined everything continuing to evolve, and what does it enable you to do that you can't do with just a static mm. device? Well, <clears throat> I mean, I, the approach we took, um, we started like you know years ago, about six years ago, was saying we can get computers. Uh, deployed for our applications, no problem, uh, and you know, at, at on demand and in our internal cloud. Now we can do it as a hybrid cloud solution. One of the biggest problems we had in software defined was how do you put security policy, firewall policy, um, with that compute? And in you know our industry, there's lots of segmentation for material, non-public information, um, compliance. It you know could be internet facing, B two B facing. Uh, we do that. Today, we program various firewall vendors automatically. Uh, we allow our application developers to create um, these policies and push them through as code and then program the firewall. What we were really looking to do here is distribute that. So we, f day one, in getting Pensando into production was to use our, uh, our firewall system. It's called Pinnacle. We, um, we program from Pinnacle directly into the Pensando Venice manager via API, and then it you know, uses its inventory systems to push those things out. So for us, Software Defined has been around, I like to call it the storefront, but for the developer, it's network policy, it's load balancing, um, and, and that's really what they see. Those are the big products on the net. Everything else is just packet forwarding to right. them. So we wanted with Pensando, at least starting with security, to have that bar set day one and then get you know all the benefits of scale throughput and having the policies close to the on the edge you know we're back to talking about the edge we want it right there with the with the deployment with the workload or the application and that's that's what we're doing right off the bat. Yeah. One of the things you mentioned in your talk was, is you know, kind of in the theme of atomic computing, right? You want to get smaller and smaller units so that yep. you can uh, apply and redeploy based on whatever the workload is and, and the change. And you said you've now been able to, you know, basically take things out of dedicated, you know, kind of a dedicated yes. space, dedicated line, a dedicated job so that you can now put them in a more virtualized situation exactly. and grab more resources as you need them. Well, you would think the architecture, I mean, even just theater of the mind is just you're saying, I'm going to put this specific thing that I have to secure behind these firewalls. So it's one cabinet of computers or a hundred. It's still behind a set of firewalls. It's a very north south, you know, get in, get out here you're talking about having that same level of security, and I think that's novel, right? There hasn't been, if you look at virtual firewalls or you know, IP tables on Linux, I mean, it's corruptible. It's, it's, it can be attacked on the computer, and once, it's, you know, once you've been attacked and that, that, that attack vector has been you know, hit, you're, you're compromised. This is a separate management plane, um, you know, separate control plane. The server doesn't see it. That security is provided. It's at scale. It's east-west. The more computers that have the Pensando, you know, architecture inside of them, the, you know, the wider you can go. Right. And then the north-south goes away. I'm just curious to get your perspective um, as, you know, everyone is a technology company. At the same time, technology budgets are going down. Yeah. People are hard to hire. Uh, your data is growing exponentially, and everything's a securities threat. Yes. Um, so <laughs> as you get up in the morning, get ready to come Very to positive. work, and you're drinking your coffee, I mean, how do you – you know, kind of communicate to, to make sure the senior management knows kind of what your objectives are and this, this kind of ongoing challenge to do more with less yeah. in IT, even though it's an increasingly strategic place or it actually is what the company does yeah. now. It just happens to wrap it around airplane services or financial services or right. travel or whatever. Uh, I think you're, like, I, and I had said it to John before, um, it has to come from, that budget has to come from somewhere. So I think a combination of, of one that's less, well, I'll say the one that's easier to quantify is you're going to take budget from, say, appliance manufacturer and move it to a distributed edge. And you're going to hopefully save some money while you do it. Um, you're going to do it at scale. You're going to do it at you know high throughput. And the security is the same or better. 
So that's that's one. That's one place to take capital from. The other one is to say, can I use the next computer? Yes, because I don't have to deploy these other new computers behind this stack of firewalls. Is there agility there? Is there efficiency? Um, am I buying less servers and using you know more of what I have and doing it you know able to deploy faster? And it's harder to quantify. I think if you could you know over time see I bought twenty percent less server uh, capacity or you know x eighty six capacity, that's a savings. And the other one that's very hard to quantify, but it's always nice to have the development community and I've had it recently where they say, hey, this took me a month to deploy instead of a year. Um, and you know the purchase cycles uh, you know for procurement and deployment they're long, you know, in enterprise, you want them to be quick, but they're right, really not. Right. So all of those things add up. And that's the story, you know, I would tell, you know, any manager. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, the old historic way, the utilization rates were just so, 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 so low between yes. CPU and memory and everything else. Because if nothing else, because to get another box, you know, could take a long time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, final final uh, question for you, Sony. You talked about architectures and being locked into architectures. And you, and you talked about you guys are already looking forward, you know, to kind of your next r rev, your next release, kind of your next step forward. What Where do you see kind of the direction? Don't give away any secrets, but, um, you know, kind of where you guys going? What are your priorities now that you've launched? You got a little bit uh, more money in the bank. Well, our biggest priorities will be to focus on customer success, is to make sure that the customer journey is, is indeed replicable at scale, is to enable the partner success. Uh, so in addition to Goldman Sachs, the ability to go and replicate it across the federated markets, whether it's global financial services, healthcare, federal, and partnering with HP Enterprise so that they can, on their platform, amplify the value of this architecture, not just on their compute platforms, but on in other areas. And the third one clearly is for our cloud customers, is to make sure that they are in a position to build a world-class cloud architecture on top of which then they can build their own deliver their own services, their own secret sources, uh, so that they can excel at whatever that cloud is, whether it's to become the leading edge platform as a service customer, whether it is to be the leading edge serv software as a service platform customer. So it's all about the execution, as, uh, as you heard in that that's room, right. and that's fundamentally what we're going to strive to be, is to be a great execution machine and keep our heads down and focus on making our customers and our partners very successful. Well, Sonny, congratulations again to you thank and the you. team on the launch today. And Josh, thank you for hosting sure. this terrific event and uh, being an early customer. Yeah, yeah, happy to be. All right, thank I'm you. Jeff Sony. Josh, we're the top of Goldman Sachs at the Pensando, the new. Welcome to the new edge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.